Hi everyone! So, this is a part two to a video. I put them up basically at the same time. I put this one up like 10 minutes later. But if you haven't watched the first part, go watch that because this video won't really make sense unless you've seen the first part, which I do think some of my better moments are in the first half. I guess I will tell you the whole story of why this is in two parts now. I filmed it, I edited it, I had about two hours of footage, I got it down to 40 minutes, and then I went to save it. But then it wouldn't save because it was too big. I didn't have enough storage. So I just started deleting off apps that I didn't need right now and that I could re-download when I had like posted to YouTube and all of that. Deleted app after app after app and it still wouldn't save. <laughs> it'll actually like take a screenshot of what my iPad looked like. I deleted every single app that I could delete and it still wouldn't save. And I deleted a video that I had in the making. I had about 30 minutes of footage for it. It was a reading books based on musicals slash one book that a music that was based on a musical. <laughs> um, and I ended up having to delete it. I had been working on it since October. <laughs> that kind of was a bit frustrating. <laughs> and then I still didn't have enough storage. <laughs> so that video is obviously no longer going to happen. I'm definitely going to do another round of it because that was always my intention. I wanted to make like a series out of it of me reading books that were based on musicals etc or musicals that were based on books. It always like that was always my intention to make it like a series. Um, just episode one is not happening. Uh, I read Matilda by Roald Dahl which I have read when I was younger but I haven't read it in years and I watched the musical which that musical is so good guys it was so much fun. <laughs> And then I also read Dear Evan Hansen. I was planning on reading Wicked. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> Basically, if like in the past few months, if you've ever heard me mention a secret reading vlog that I was doing, that was the one. <laughs> but I will definitely do a part two in the new year. There was a lot of other books that I want re to read for that. So I'll save Wicked for then. I'll read Wicked in the new year. And I also like I had originally planned on reading like The Phantom of the Opera for it, but then I just didn't have the time because of this video. So I like read those and I'll talk about like Dear Evan Hansen and Matilda in that and then I'll also read some other ones. I had a whole list of books that I wanted to read for it um, and that's why it was going to be a series because there was like way too many for just one reading vlog. And I suppose now that I've told you what it is about, if you have any recommendations of what you would want me to read, don't suggest Les Mis guys. <laughs> Uh, like leave them down below if you want. I am actually planning on reading Les Mis in the new year because um, there is a read-along <laughs> happening. Yeah so I still didn't have enough storage after I had deleted all of those so I kind of felt like I deleted them for no reason and it really <laughs> just broke my heart a little. And then I realized there's nothing there's literally nothing else I could delete so I had to go to my Goodreads vlog and I had to delete half of it all. <laughs> Every time I deleted one of those small segments, a little piece of my soul died. <laughs> um, I was being very dramatic last night. I realized now it's actually, it's not that bad. Uh, I've <laughs> re-edited this this morning <laughs> and it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so I kind of, it's, and it was definitely quicker because of the fact I knew what it had looked like and sounded like the last time so I kind of knew where I was cutting and stuff so it was actually a lot easier and quicker. <laughs> Definitely watch part one of this video and then come back here and watch this part or don't but I'd like if you did. Let's get into it. I had this idea I was like I should read all of the YA fantasy and then once I got that idea I clung on to it and I was like don't do it don't do it and I was like must do it so I'm doing it. That's the big problem with the Goodreads Choice Awards. It's a popularity contest. Top 10 have officially been announced. I'm hoping to get at least one or maybe two five star books. But this video has taken an unfortunate turn where I'm not liking any of the books. Remember when I told you we went downhill? Yeah, we went real downhill. Gay fantasy slash sci-fi, redeem yourself. This is not working out as planned. I have not got a single five star. I don't think I'm going to get a single five star. So I finished two more books since then and one of those is Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas and I gave it a four out of five stars which we consider that a success here. One of two four stars I've given so far and as I said I think in the last clip if Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare comes out on top I will be so mad <laughs> and then Cemetery Boys came along. This is going into the first place spot. 
but it's still not a five stars for me. So Adriel is a trans boy and his family is kind of not really accepting his identity and and he wants to prove himself a brujo. So in this community there is brujos and then brujas and so a bruja is a woman and they have healing powers and then the brujos are the men and they have powers to kind of summon ghosts and to be able to kind of send them on to the next world. <laughs> Yadriel decides that he's going to prove himself that he is a real brujo and therefore proving that he is actually a boy and he summons a ghost but it is the wrong ghost, it is the school's bad boy and then they go on a bit of a journey together to track down his friends and to try and find out what happened to him. I did, I did really like this and I liked almost everything about it but I had a couple problems. I could I could really rave about everything I loved about it but that's what everything everyone's raving the characters are so wonderful just the message of the story is so wonderful everything is so wonderful and it really it almost got me crying a good few times which is hard to do <laughs> even the characters that we only met like twice were so well-rounded and I really loved that <laughs> and the family relationships they were complicated and they were also filled with love as well. I did have two problems with it. Number one was it was so predictable <laughs> and I was kind of a little disappointed by that. And then number two was that the romance, I wasn't 100% into it. It took me a while to get into it and I was kind of surprised by that because I was, when I heard the, like when I heard the synopsis at first, I was like, I am so there for that. It took a while for me to like really get behind it. I liked their dynamic but I kind of liked the friendship nearly because there was three of them. There was um so there was Julian, there was Yadriel and there was Maritza and the three of them I just loved the dynamic between the three of them and like the friendship that was growing there and I just didn't really see the romantic connection. Uh, by the end I was definitely rooting for them. I didn't really get the romantic kind of side until way later in the book and I was like okay now I'm rooting for you. <laughs> I got there in the end at least. And so then I finished Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Yadayemi. This was a three star book and I don't actually think it was the book's fault. I think it was my fault. I was kind of starting to slump. I still am because of reading all of these books and none of them I'm really loving so kind of started to slump and I was kind of just dragging myself through it. So I do think it was more of a me problem than a book problem but I give it a three stars anyway because it is based on my enjoy enjoyment and even though I know I probably could have enjoyed it more I didn't. I just felt kind of meh about it. I was bored a lot. There was only one character that I really liked and even then I didn't like her till like near the end and then I was like oh yeah I like her. <laughs> I didn't really like the main character, didn't like her brother <laughs> and I liked the princess. She was cool. I mean it definitely it's an interesting world and it's an interesting concept but I just really wasn't connecting to the story and I really found myself dragging myself through. But I felt like things were very convenient for them and also there was this bit which was like such double standards. This group of characters they almost get killed and then this group of people that almost killed and they were like oh sorry and then they were like it's okay we forgive you and then this other group is trying to kill them and then the dude is like yeah my bad about that and Zelly's brother he's like I don't forgive you how could you think I would forgive you you tried to kill us I'm like literally two pages ago you were forgiving like another group of people for trying to kill you. Like I can understand why he was mad but also just don't forgive anyone who tries to kill you. There was a lot of moments that I liked and I was definitely intrigued by the magic and the world the most. There was one character that I did actually quite enjoy so there was definitely there definitely was positives but I just was not really in the mood to be reading it and so my experience was kind of negative I guess because of that and I'm going to slide it into fifth place currently so we have Cemetery Boys, Chain of Gold, Legend Born, Queen of Nothing and then Children of Blood and Bone. I will see you when we finish my last two books. I did it! <laughs>
The results are announced tomorrow and I finished both of the last two books today so let's quickly talk about them. Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer and I gave this a two out of five stars. It's Twilight Toad from Edward's perspective. I can honestly describe my entire feelings about this book in like one sentence. I was uncomfortable and I was cringing a lot but I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> yeah that basically sums it up. I did not really enjoy being in Edward's head for a lot of it. I did not like how he was viewing Bella and things that he was thinking about her. I was like, stop. He <laughs> had no right to be 700 pages long, guys. I didn't hate it. I There were some bits where I was like, it was kind of nearly just nostalgia. Also, I completely forgot what happened in the first Twilight book. I could only remember the movie. <laughs> it was a, It wasn't a good book, but it was kind of fun to read. Also, I did actually really enjoy getting to see flashbacks of Edward's past and getting to know more about like his family and like getting like sweet moments between them because you don't really get those in the original series so I actually did really enjoy those bits but there wasn't really a lot of them. I also read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. It follows Spencer. She lives on this planet where they keep getting attacked by these kind of aliens called Krell and her father was one of these like fighter pilots kind of and she really looked up to him but in like this huge battle he fled and Spencer is now branded as like a coward's daughter and everyone treats her family really poorly uh, but she doesn't believe that that's true and she wants to prove herself uh, that she's not a coward or anything like that and gave it a four out of five stars. Everything was solid but nothing was really mind-blowing to me and that's kind of why it's a four star because everything I feel like was pretty solid, the plot, the characters the world building, all of that, I feel like it was fairly solid but I don't think anything was like extremely unique or special and I wasn't like super connected to anyone in it. And it definitely made me even more excited to read his fantasy books because he is most well known for his like epic adult fantasies and this is a YA sci-fi. Those were the 10 books that I read for this. So now I guess we'll kind of just discuss, we've been on a bit of a journey together. This was very fun at some points and also very slumpy at other points. I am just dying for some adult fantasy. you think I'd be dying for like a totally different genre but no I'm still like <laughs> I want more fantasy but I want it to be adult. I do think that I am growing out of the YA fantasy genre. YA sci-fi I don't think so because I haven't read a lot of that and I'm definitely intrigued by it. Now I have four different categories here. I'll just go through them. So I'll go through average rating first. <laughs> so number 10 on the average rating is Cinderella is Dead, 9 is Midnight Sun, 8 is A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, uh, 7 is Children of Virtue and Vengeance, 6 is Fable, 5 is Queen of Nothing, 3 and 4 is Cemetery Boys and Starsight, they have the same average rating, uh, 2 is Chain of Gold, and number 1 is Legendborn. So that's the average rating, which Unfortunately, that doesn't really matter when it comes to the Goodreads Choice Awards. <laughs> Onto the number of ratings it has, which this does have a big impact on what wins. So, number 10, Legendborn, 9, Cinderella is Dead, 8, Fable, 7, Cemetery Boys, 6, Vir Children of Virtue and Vengeance, 5, Star Sight, 4, Chain of Gold, 3, Midnight Sun, 2, Queen of Nothing, 1, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So we'll move on to my opinion. <laughs> which is obviously the most important category here. 10 is Fable, 9 is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, 8 is Midnight Sun, 7 is Cinderella is Dead, 6 is Children of Blood and Bone, number 5 is The Queen of Nothing, number 4 is Legend Born, number 3 is Chain of Gold, number 2 is Skyward, and number 1, my favourite book from all 10 of these, is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas and I gave that a 4 out of 5 stars too. I will not take any criticism. <laughs> now we have one more category to discuss, my prediction. And I'm gonna put number 10 as Legendborn. Uh, this doesn't mean that I think it should be last, I don't. <laughs> That's what my like opinion thing is for. I do not think it deserves to be last. 9, Cinderella is dead. Again, this one doesn't have a very high average rating and it also doesn't have a very high number of ratings. 8 is Fable, which I don't like Fable anyway. Then it started to get tricky. So I put 7 as Children of Virtue and Vengeance. It has a lot of ratings but its average rating is actually pretty low compared to the first book. Then I went 6, Star Sight, because Brandon Sanderson 
is a pretty big name and also it does have a lot of ratings and it has a pretty high average ratings. I think I might have been a bit biased with this one but I put number five as Cemetery Boys. Not as many people have read it as they have Star Sight but <laughs> I just love it so much. I think I was being a bit um biased. <laughs> number four is I put Midnight Sun because that has like 60,000 ratings. Then number three I put is Chain of Gold. I don't think it actually has that many ratings compared to like some of her other books but even people who people who have read her previous books and haven't read this one will probably vote for this. The top two is where I also had a bit of a debate. The Battle of Songbirds and Stakes it has about 60,000 more votes than Queen of Nothing so I was like that's the obvious choice for first but then I thought Holly Black fans are like at a whole new level. They're kind of like same with Sarah J Maas fans. Like I know she's gonna win tomorrow because she, of course she is. Everything she gets put up for, she wins. I think it'll be close between the two, but I push Queen of Nothing as my prediction for number one. I think I might pull it off. I'm going with Battle of Songbirds and Snakes as number two and uh, Queen of Nothing as number one. Tis time. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Okay, well, I just saw the winner because it's the first thing to show up, and I was right, it's The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. So, Legend Born by Tracy Dion was number 10, which I was right about. Then, Cinderella's Dead, I was right about. Fable, I was right about. Oh, then it's Starsight. Okay, I was wrong about that. And Cemetery Boys, I was wrong about. <laughs> Children of Virtue and Vengeance. Okay, so I got the three of those mixed up. Then, Midnight Sun, I was right. Chain of Gold, I was right. <laughs> Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I was right. And Queen of Nothing, I was right. So that wasn't too bad. I was pretty good at guessing. Cemetery Boys was the best. It should have won, but it just didn't have the following. I'm curious how many of these have more votes than video ratings. It wasn't too bad. The winner did actually have less votes than it does ratings. Legendborn, Cinderella Z, Fable, Cemetery Boys, and Chain of Gold, they all had more votes than they do ratings which, I, as I said earlier in this video, is a pretty big problem with the Goodreads Choice Awards. So, what can we take away from this? I'm not really that more into YA fantasy anymore. Don't read 10 YA fantasies and sci-fis in a row. And I'm very good at predicting the Goodreads Choice Awards winners. This was actually, it was a lot of fun. But I don't think I will be doing it next year. I think that brings us to the end of this. I can't think of anything else I have to say. Uh, this is going to be a very long video. If you manage to stay to the end, thanks. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, subscribe. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.